So, um, so this is a big green bus. It's, it's a bus. bunch of Dartmouth students, like 12 of you. Yeah. Or do you all go out constantly? Is it like a Melrose place kind of thing? Um, there are 11 of us who are on the bus for the whole summer. Well, but we actually take kind of little vacations from time to time. Right. And we're traveling all around the country for 10 weeks, doing a big tour, visiting 45 major cities to talk to people and really start to foster a dialogue about renewable energy and the fact that everyone really needs to think consciously about the lifestyle choices that they make to hopefully live more sustainably and reduce their environmental impact. So are you guys trying to like eat organic as you go? I mean, I know you're biodiesel fuel, which is very cool. Yeah. Um, you know, our bus runs on waste vegetable oil, which is free and sustainable. Right. Um, we have a solar panel on the roof to meet all of our electric needs. So for us, the bus is really a vehicle to travel sustainably and um, spread our message. And, and did we, Dartmouth fund this? How did that work? They do fund part of the project. Right. Um, most of our funding comes from corporate sponsorships, coming from companies, coming from individuals, also legislators who we've met with along our way, um, talking to us about moves that they were making in their specific towns or states to um, kind of make a difference. So what's a fun little story about all these travels? You must have a lot of fun inspiring stories. We we do have a lot of fun stories. Um, you know, I, one thing that was really cool for me was right when we hit the road out of Hanover, we drove straight, straight down to Tennessee to go to the Bonnaroo Music Festival. Um, we, we drove through the night, but the next morning we found ourselves being honked at by passerbyers, and they were just giving us thumbs up. And they like they could read what was on the side of the bus, and they were just they were just giving us a shout out and giving us some support, and that really pumped us up for um, for our first engagement in Tennessee. And since we've been back in not not as much in Texas, but actually we've no I've actually noticed a difference coming back into Colorado with just the amount of people that are give us a wave or a smile or a thumbs up, and that's really empowering as we go along our journey. And Bonnaroo is a great example of a ton of young people partying, having a yeah. good time, and yet that festival is going super green. They're doing some great it's stuff. Super green, yeah. yeah. They, um, they have a uh, in Center Roo, which is kind of the main area, they have a section called Planet Roo, which is comprised of environmental organizations and nonprofits that are really working towards um, kind of a better planet, a more environmentally responsible planet. And we we're actually um, able to work there as volunteers in Planet Roo and offer our own um, offer our own knowledge up to all the people that were coming by as well. So thanks so much for doing this with me. Yeah, hey, nice to Welcome chat with to you. Boulder. Thank you. It's really good to be here. It's yeah. really good to be here. I'm from Alaska originally, so oh, nice. you know, I, I could do the Texas and and Georgia thing for a while, but it's great to be back out west and yeah, right. <laughs> where it's a little less humid too. Well, I have so. a couple copies if you guys get bored on great. board. Oh yeah, we definitely, board on we'll board. definitely check these out. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, um, 1966 Bluebird International School Bus. We bought it used, converted it to run. It's a small conversion for the diesel engine itself because diesel engines were actually made to run on peanut oil and clearly, um, you know, that uh, quickly faded away when petroleum became such an abundant alternative option to that. So for it to run on veggie oil is not a huge transition. The major conversions have really happened with our fuel tanks and our pump system. Um, so we are able to pump things straight out of a 50 gallon barrel behind a fast food restaurant, run it through two huge filters that we have in the back, which I'll show you in a second, and then into two tanks. We have a 100 gallon tank and a 120 gallon tank. Um, and we're getting about six miles to the gallon on this bus, which is the same as we would on diesel. So it's a pretty, um, you know, it takes a little bit of extra effort to maintain, but it's free. We've already saved about $2,000 that we would have spent on gas. So the idea is you start on diesel fuel, you run it for a few miles to get your engine temperature up, and then we have a big rocker switch on the dash, and just flip that. There's a valve, you see there's this black piece in here with a bunch of hoses coming off of it. That chooses between one fuel system or the other. 
So you're going down the road, once the engine's warm, you flip the switch, it shuts off the diesel side completely and opens up the vegetable side and it just keeps on going. Are you still on camera? So I'm, we're using a ton of cliff bars that are one of their sponsors. They're organic. And what we'd like to note is that there's 12 people, young people, full of 11, whatever, full of full of hormones, and there's only three bunk beds. There's, well, there's also a couch. Like, two and a couch. Fit on that couch. So I think there's a lot of green building going on. There's also a Um We'll bond later. It's not very interesting to the, uh, the thousands and millions of fans. So this is the logo of the green bus, and I'm here with Brent. Not Brett. Brent. And, uh, right? Yeah, Brent. You and you were just saying, I was mentioning uh, a friend of ours who's going to be a model in the next Eco Fashion uh, walked by and you said you were just at an Eco Fashion show in New Orleans. Yeah, it was the uh, Recycled Fashion with the Green Project in New Orleans. They're kind of, um, they're like a thrift store, but for building materials. Uh, after the hurricane, they just sort of went around with trucks, gathered up everybody's old toilets, bookshelves, wow. you know, whatever it is, even lumber. Collected it in this big warehouse, and now they sell it back really cheap to try and you know jumpstart the rebuilding in New Orleans sort and of thing. Super eco, they're reusing super all that. Super eco, super yeah. you know, none of the stuff's getting reprocessed or dumped. You know, it's as it is, weathered wood, wow. which you know is kind of trendy in some parts of New Orleans right yeah. now. And you work anything, any kind of project like that, where the community sees its problem, identifies the problem, then finds a creative solution. That's what we're all about. You know, right. this is a creative solution to our problem of talking to everyone around the country. Right. Right, and it's super inspiring. We were talking with uh, what's her name earlier, and uh, Haley. You were talking Haley. to Haley. No, Win Winifred. Whitney. Whitney. You were talking to Whitney. And, uh, and she, you know, and she was saying, well, actually, in my opinion, you know, young people are are super committed and involved to a sustainable world, and often, you know, I feel the opposite. So just meeting her and hearing that is very inspiring. So. And part of that too is. A lot of the people we talk to are young people. Yeah. Um, it just as happens as you know, we go to Bonnaroo, we go to huge music festivals, right. we go to water parks when it's hot. Nice. Um, so we're seeing a lot of young people, and they really are the ones who are jazzed about this now. And it's really fun when families come because the kids know all about sustainability, and they can tell you why solar panels aren't good right now, but why they will be in ten years. Wow. You know, and their parents have no idea. Right. Their parents suck the energy out of the earth, burn it. You're happy, good to go. Right. Well, you're driving the biggest vehicle that uh, I approve of the most that I've Thank ever met. Uh, hey, I appreciate met. it. Good stuff. And good luck, Phil. Yeah.